Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I have two amazing tricks for the lap curve to go from this to this. Let's get started. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. If you don't recognize me, I went to my barber and I asked, what is it to color my beard? And it says like 15 bucks. So I thought, okay, why not try that? <laughs> But now, when you look at the camera, it looks like I pull my shirt up to my nose. <laughs> By the way, also, I have made this amazing video here where I show you a comparison between the classic tourist shot and how I would shoot the location with a lot of tips and tricks and secret sauce in there. Check that out. Also, don't forget to join my live stream on Sunday. Of course, the first thing we need here is a curve adjustment. So let's go down to our adjustment layer, select the curve, and here we have it. So of course, we need to switch this over from RGB to the lab mode. And here in the pop down menu, we do have different choices. We have master, lightness, A opponent, B opponent, and alpha. And this is where we find our trick for today. So first of all, what we want to touch is the A opponent and the B opponent. And here is an interesting trick. You see, we have here one of the points that is very dark in the lower left, and then we have a point in the bright areas, which is up here in the top right corner. So select the lower left one, go down here to X and enter a value, for example, 0 0.2, and then go up here to the bright point, select that and enter in X 0 0.8, like so. Now we do the same thing for the B opponent. Select the lower one, enter 0 0.2, and then select the upper one and enter 0 0.8. And as you can see like that, this will give us more saturation in our image. Now, to be honest, this is very similar to what you get from saturation, but the difference is that you have more control over this. And here is the first trick of today for our lab curve, because here we can warm up the picture to give it a sunny day touch. Now here is what you should not do. What is a classic mistake, I've done it in the past too. Don't worry if you're a victim of that, that's completely normal. And that is to go here to adjustment and then to white balance. Now, what is the problem with white balance? Look at this. When I push this up warmer, the problem is that everything becomes warmer in the image and that makes it look not too good because shadows are cooler and only the light parts are warmer, but not the complete light parts because they are again cooler or white. So don't do that. Let's delete this, go back into our lab adjustment. And what we want to go is to the B opponent. And here you want to pull up this upper side here, pull it up and you can see the image is getting warmer. Again, the shadows are getting warmer too. We don't want to have that. So what are we going to do? We grab this lower part here and either bring it back to its original point or drag it even lower to make the shadows cooler. Usually it looks good to keep that here in that original state and then decide where this warm starting point should be. That depends on your image where you want to have warmer areas or not. And of course, don't overdo it. So wiggle this a little bit around. You can see when I go a little bit higher here and then maybe start my cooler areas a little bit earlier, like so. You can see that we get a nice warmth in our image that is only on the parts that actually look warm to us when we look at it, not the shadows, right? Okay, here's another classic mistake. You know I'm not a fan of the vignette in Affinity Photo, but still, let's have a look at it. So open up on the live filter your vignette down here, and here is the problem. We have exposure as our setting. Look at the cloud up here, what is happening. I push down the exposure and the cloud is getting dark. That's not good. That doesn't look nice. That's not natural. That's not 
I don't want that. No, thank you. Okay, so let's delete that again. And I will create a second curve. So adjustment, curve. Let's pull this up here. So it's not affecting the curve. That's pretty important. Set it again to lap mode. And this time we are going into lightness and we will pull this up and down and you see it adjusts the image. Now I want to have a vignette and how do I do that? So easy. We have a mask built into our adjustment layer and we can use a gradient on that. So go over here to your gradient tool, click that and you can drag out a gradient like so and Pull down this here just to show you what is happening. This is too extreme, of course, we don't want that, but it gives us a preview. So while you are still using your gradient tool, it's very important, while you're still using your gradient tool, go up here to your fill and click on that. And here you can see you have your gradient. As you know, with the mask where the white area is, the effect is showing, where the black area is, the effect is not showing. So what do we want to do here? We want to set this as a type to elliptical, right? And I can see it's in the middle. We want to have it on the outside because it's a vignette. So we are clicking here on reverse gradient, very easy, boom. And now it's on the outside. And now I can go here, zoom out a little bit and adjust these handles here. If both of them move, very important. If both of them move, you need to click up here on that lock to unlock them because otherwise they're moving together. If you have them not locked, they are moving individually. So now we can adjust this to the position where we want to have that, also to the shape of our ellipse that we desire. And another benefit here, you see this little handle here. It's, it's very tiny. You also have it in here if you want to see it a little bit better. This will decide how strongly your ellipse is fading to the outside. You can see here with the blue that we have a little bit over here. So that's good. Let's keep it like that. Maybe move it up a little bit so we have a little bit darkness also down here. That's okay. Good. Now let's reset our curve. Go to our lightness mode, right? Lightness. And here you can see when I pull this down, look at the clouds up here. They are still bright. Even if I pull this down more, the clouds are still bright. And this is what we want to have. We want to have a nice darker area around it, a nice vignette, but the bright areas still need to be bright. I only want to have the feeling it is a little bit darker, but not the bright areas to be darker because that is kind of unnatural. It doesn't look good. With this, you get a very nice result like that. And by the way, if you feel like your adjustment from before is a little bit too strong, no problem. Simply use your opacity slider to readjust that. Let's go down to, let's say 75% like so. So you can slide this around. Also with your vignette, you have the same ability. Just slide this around as you wish. And just like that, you have adjusted a really nice image with the lap curves. Thank you very much for watching. See you in my next tutorial. And don't forget about my live stream tomorrow, Sunday. Also, please leave a like and a comment and a share and a subscription because that really helps my channel. See you soon. Bye.